Section 5.1, Extreme Values of Functions. We have a definition of absolute extreme values. Let f be a function with domain d, then f of c is the absolute maximum value of d on d, if and only if f of x is less than or equal to f of c for all x and d. So we have an absolute maximum if none of the function is above that point. So this would be a maximum value up here. We have an absolute minimum if no other point is above this point. So we have this minimum value, no other point is below, so this must be an absolute minimum. Exploring extreme values. On negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, f of x equals cosine of x takes on a maximum value of 1 once and a minimum value of 0 twice. So there's a maximum on the interior of the interval and two minimums on the exterior at the endpoints of the interval. The function g of x equals sine of x takes on a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. So we don't have any uh, extreme values on the interior. Uh, it's the endpoints where we have the maximum and the minimum. Exploring absolute extrema. The absolute extrema of the following functions on the domains can be seen in the figure 5.2. Well, here's an example of where we have uh, one minimum. So we have a minimum on here on the entire graph of x squared. Now if we just go from uh, 0 to 2, we have one minimum here and a maximum here, meaning we can have the minimum and maximum at the endpoints. Well here we have an open dot, so this, this doesn't have a minimum value. This creeps up on 0, 0 forever, but we do have a maximum at an endpoint. So if the endpoint is an open dot, there is either not a maximum or not a minimum, at least at that endpoint. If we have open dots on the endpoints, we don't have a min or a max in between, then this doesn't have a minimum or a maximum. So there's lots of different combinations that we can have. This graph has an overall maximum and an overall minimum, and those are happening uh, at, uh, at interior points. And then this one would be a local maximum, and this endpoint over here would be a local minimum. Here we have a maximum and a minimum, and those are both happening at endpoints. Here we have a minimum, uh, a minimum, an overall minimum. We have a local minimum here, and an overall or an absolute maximum at an interior point. Here we have a local minimum at an endpoint, an overall minimum at an interior point, and then right here we have a local, or excuse me, an absolute maximum at an endpoint. So this is kind of a, a chart to summarize everything. We have absolute minimums, local maxes, local minimum, uh, absolute max, and then again we have a local minimum here at an endpoint. Theorem 2, local extreme values. If a function f has a local maximum value or a local minimum value at an interior point c of its domain, and if the first derivative exists at c, then f prime of c is equal to zero. Well, if we have a uh, min or a max, then the slope of the tangent line is going to be zero. In other words, the derivative at that point is going to be zero. A critical point, a point in the interior of a domain of a function f at which f prime equals zero or f prime does not exist is a critical point of f. So we can have a place where the derivative doesn't exist and that's a point that we want to look at. It is called a critical point. Find the absolute max and min values of this function on the interval negative 2 to 3. So we need negative 2 comma something, and we need uh, 3 comma something, and then there could be a, a critical point in between that we have to look at, in between negative 2 and 3. Let's take the derivative of x is equal to 2 thirds x, that's a 3, and if we minus 3 thirds, that or minus 1, uh, that'll be x to the negative one-third. Well, that's equal to 2 over 3 times the third root of x. So 0 makes this function uh, undefined. It's, in other words, the, the, fun the derivative doesn't exist at 0. So we want to look at 0 comma something, and I know what 0 to the two-thirds is. It's 0, but let's use our calculator to get some values here cause, so we can figure out what's going on. Let's calculate... Uh, negative 2 raised to the 2 thirds. And that is 1.587, 1 1.587. And then uh, we can change that to a 3. So how about entry 
and we'll back up delete that and make that a 3 and so that is 2.08 so 2.08 and it says uh, find the absolute maximum so the absolute maximum maximum of uh, we got 2.080 at x equals 3 and we have a minimum of 0 at x equals 0 Finding extreme values. Find the extreme values of f of x equals this function right here. Let's talk about the domain. The domain of uh, 4 minus x squared has to be greater than or equal to 0. Because we can't take the square root. Actually, it can't even be equal uh, to 0. So let's scratch that out. It has to be greater than 0 because we can't take the square root of negative values. So we can factor this 2 minus x and then we have 2 plus x is greater than 0. So the zeros are x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. Well, well, we know what this 4 minus x squared looks like. It's up at 1, 2, 3, 4. We got negative 2 and 2. This is an upside down parabola because the a is negative and here's our zeros. So we want to know where this parabola is positive. Well, it's in between negative 2 and 2. So the domain is negative 2 to 2. Now that, what that tells us is we don't have endpoints because these would be open dots. So no endpoints. So we're looking for a min or a max in between these two values. So let's take the derivative. Where can we do that? Let's do f of x is equal to, it's really 4 minus x squared uh, to the negative 1 half power. So the derivative is equal to negative 1 half times we have 4 minus x squared, and that's uh, if we minus 2 halves, now that's negative 3 halves. And uh, that's equal to, oh, times, I almost forgot the chain rule, times negative 2x, times negative 2x. So the 2's are going to cancel out, negative times a negative is a positive. So that's going to be x over, uh, we could really do the square root of, 4 minus x squared uh, to the third power. Now we want to know where that is either 0 or undefined. And 0 is going to make this fraction 0, so x equals 0. Now we can't make the denominator 0 because what makes the denominator 0 is not even in the domain. Uh, so we don't have to worry about this being undefined. So now we need to explore what is happening at 0. And we're going to use a number line. We're going to put 0 right here. We're going to test negative 1 and we're going to test 1 into the first derivative right here. And if your derivative is positive, then the function is increasing. Imagine an increasing function. All of the, all the slopes of the derivatives will be positive. And then when the function goes to decreasing, all of the derivatives are going to be negative. So if your derivative changes from positive to negative, you must have a maximum. Now if your derivative goes from negative to positive, you must have a minimum. So uh, if we test negative 1, we find out we have negative 1 over positive. So this function is decreasing to 0 because the first derivative is negative. Then if we plug 1 in, the derivative is positive which means this function must be increasing. So it decreases to zero and then increases afterward. So we have a minimum, minimum of, if I plug zero back into the original right here, we get one over the square root of four, which is one half. So we get a minimum of one half and that's happening at x equals zero. Let's see if that's what's actually happening. Let's type this in. 1 divided by, and then we have the square root of 4 minus x squared. And uh, let's graph that. So we're going to go zoom and number 6. And uh, we just have this tiny little graph here. So let, let's zoom in. Zoom, and we're going to zoom in on this. And you can see that we do have a minimum here right at 1 half. In exercise 11 through 18, use analytical methods to find the extreme values of the function on the interval and where they occur. Identify any critical points that are not stationary points. 
So we want to look at negative 2 comma something, and we're going to look at 3 comma something, and we want to find out are there any values in between negative 2 and 3 that are critical points. So let's find the derivative. f prime of x is equal to, we have 3 fifths x to the negative 2 fifths. Because you're going to minus 1, we're going to minus 5 fifths uh, from the power. So that's equal to 3 over 5 times the fifth root of x squared. And 0 makes this derivative undefined. So that now is a critical point. So we need uh, 0, 0 is a critical point. Now we just need these two other values. So let's find out what negative 2, negative 2 raised to the 3 fifths is. 3 divided by 5. And we get negative 1.516, negative 1.516. And then what about 3? So we're going to go second entry, and we're going to change this to a 3. So a little too far. Delete, that's a 3, and we have 1.933, 1.933. So we have a minimum on this interval of negative 1.516, and that's happening at x equals negative 2. And we have a maximum, maximum of 1.933 at x equals 3.